Hello and welcome. Welcome back to my lounge room. Lovely to see you again. In today's session, we're going to have lots of opportunity to run through the whole form again and again. But each time we'll have a slightly different uh, concept to put in the mind, which will then have to change the experience in our body. So one of them that we'll be focusing on is about transitioning from fullness into emptiness, from emptiness into fullness. If you remember, oh, the symbol of Tai Chi is actually the yin and yang symbol, <laughs> uh, which I happen to have here on my t-shirt. <laughs> so that yin and yang symbol can illustrate or can represent the fullness going into the emptiness and the emptiness going into the fullness. But there is always that dot of the opposite in the yin and yang symbol. So what does that mean on a very practical level? When we're thinking about our weight shift, for example, in waving hands in the clouds, we can think about one leg has all of the weight in it. And one image that I really love is the old fashioned egg timer that has grains of sand and you turn the egg timer upside down and it's just grain by grain, it, it goes to the other side of the egg timer. So thinking about the weight all in one leg and then when we step out and we place the foot flat on the ground, it's like that egg timer and grain by grain, we're shifting our weight into the other foot until now this is the full foot and this is the empty foot. Then we can move the empty foot a little bit closer for our waiting hands in the clouds, for example, and then grain by grain of sand, we're shifting our weight across um, from the empty into the full. And that is a beautiful way to contemplate our weight shift. If we notice our Tai Chi starts to speed up, this is a great way to slow us down. So that's one idea we'll think about as we go through today. Another idea is about sinking the chi to the Dantian. Now that sounds very esoteric, but it's not at all. So remember our Dantian is when you find your belly button and you put your belly button here and then it's three fingers below your belly button and just that point there would be your Dantian. In the West, we call our Dantian the center of gravity because we say that's where all our movements stem from or rotate around. But in Tai Chi, we call it Dantian. It's exactly the same spot, just a different name. So what does sinking the Chi to the Dantian mean? If you remember back to the last session, we talked about how the Yi leads the Chi. So wherever our intention, so if we bring our awareness or our intention down to Dantian, that's how we sink Dantian, uh, that's how we sink the Chi down to Dantian, just by actually focusing on the Dantian, immediately we start to sink down. So again, that's something we'll explore as we're going through our Tai Chi together. Just to feel the connection with the earth. So we're just standing on the earth. There's no effort. This is called the stance of infinity. Um, really, we could stand here, here for, you know, till the end of time without any effort. If we have too much weight on the ball of the foot, we'll be tightening the body so we don't fall forward. Too much effort. If we have too much weight on the heel of the feet, we'll be tightening the body so we don't fall backwards. Too much effort. That's why by connecting to, ah, where is the weight distributed on my feet, evenly on the heel and the ball of the foot, ah, then my center of gravity drops straight down um, between the feet so it's nice and stable. So that's that lovely sinking down, connecting with the earth. The earth is holding us up, no effort. But then on the other side, we also need to feel that beautiful, imagine there's a golden thread holding you up or uh, lengthening from the bar from the very top of the head 
upwards. So there's that beautiful double stretch, the upward movement from the top of the head and the downward movement. So the spine has actually a double stretch in it. So just feeling that for a moment. And let's begin with our neck. So we look down at our fingers, very gently allowing the arms to rise up. Turn the palms. Sink your elbows, that's how the hands move in. Turn the palms, push away. And lowering our neck as we watch the fingers floating down. Now, let's try that again. Arms rise slowly. Now, shoulder height, whatever's comfortable, turn the hands. And as the hands come in, just it's like we make a double chin. We tuck our chin in so you can feel the upper spine lengthen. Turn the palms away. Push away. Lowering our neck. Lowering our hands. Third one. Just imagine gentle resistance all around the body. And there's gentle resistance as the hands move towards our chest. Turn. It's like they're moving through water or dense air or whatever image works best for you. Great. The second one for the neck begins in the same way. Both arms float up. Turn your left hand over or try to be a mirror. Right hand down at the hip. The hand at the hip, push down, but keep the elbow soft. It helps to stabilize, turning our neck about 70% of our capacity. Moving back, wonderful. That top palm down, the bottom palm faces up, swap our hands over, and turning our neck. That top palm down, bottom palm up, swapping over. Lovely. This time, if it's comfortable, we could go to 80%. Just go that little bit further and back. Wonderful. Change our hands. Noticing our breath in. And noticing our breath out. Last one either side. Swap the hands. And let's bring the awareness to the hand at the hip. So we're still turning our neck, but keep the awareness on the hand at the hip, pushing down through the palm and back. Good. Good to switch our awareness from time to time. Hand. The lao gong, the center point of the palm, pushing down, pushing down, lovely, and back, lovely. Shoulders, fingertips touch the side of the legs. That's your gallbladder, Marian. And keep the fingertips there as you roll the shoulders forward, giving your gallbladder, gallbladder 31, just a little acupressure, <laughs> loosening up. Loosening up, wonderful. And then we roll the shoulders backwards. And again, it's just small rotation. We have about three layers of muscles in our shoulders. Usually the outer layer is lovely and strong, but it's those deeper layers that are a bit tight or stiff or weak. That's what we're trying to work on. Next one, a little wider in the stance. And this is for the larger group of shoulder muscle, muscles, arms up. Once you're on top of the ball, you sink down. Great. So gathering up, up inward and sinking down. And up. And let's try to feel the gentle resistance as we sink into the legs. Ooh. 
push down. Great. This is one of my favourite. Let's do one more. Big out breath in. And out breath. Out. Beautiful. Feet back under the hips, holding our ball. Your left hand on top. We turn, so the top hand's about heart height. Just check it's not too high and the elbow is down. And the bottom hand is just at Dantian, just below the belly button. Turning our nose and navel towards the top hand and roll. Heart height, Dantian. Turning our nose and navel. Good. And roll. Lovely. So it is that turning of the spine. That's what moves our arms. This exercise is to loosen the spine, just a very small rotation. Side to side. Fabulous. Try to keep the connection between the palms. You might feel something happening or not, doesn't matter. Especially when we roll the ball, keep the connection of the palms. Lovely. Last one. Turning. As we roll the ball, keep those palms connected. Beautiful. That's it. And back to us. So heaven and earth, bottom hand comes up. There's that lovely block. Rotation up and pushing down to the earth. Changing over. Bottom hand up. Rotating up. And down. Lovely. So again, the awareness is in the spine. What we're wanting here is that top hand lengthens the spine upwards. The bottom hand pushes our spine downwards. Doesn't change. Keeping our knees soft, keeping our elbows soft, even as we stretch. Fabulous. Last one. Lengthening up and down. Good. And we're moving to the hips. So if you do want a chair or something to hold on to, that's fine. We let the arms float up. Shifting our weight and hands down to the hip. Left foot out, hip width apart. Touch our heel. Move that foot behind, roll of the foot. Stretching through the hip. Arms float up, shoulder height. Change legs. Consciously shifting the weight across. Heel of the hand, heel of the foot. All of the foot. Arms floating up. Lovely. Consciously shifting our weight. Heel. Hip width apart. The knees soft. I'm standing on. Keep the knees soft. I'm standing on as I stretch the foot behind. One. Heel. And four. Let's do one more either side. So we're going to work our legs quite a lot today. We really want them to be lovely and warmed up. Heel, all of the foot. And final one. Heel of the hands, heel of the foot. And good. Great. Second one for the hip. Muscles outside and inside of the hips. Just tap to the side. This is where we push in the opposite direction. So you're pushing against a wall. Good. Hand and foot back. So our feet remain parallel and push in the opposite direction. Good. And coming back. So a reminder about the hands. One hand goes straight ahead, palm down, just below the shoulder height. Turn the palm away and then the other hand just pushes underneath. And then the opposite leg goes out to the side. That's it. And coming back. So other one, straight ahead. Just turn the palm away. 
lower than the shoulder. So if it's above the shoulder, put strain on the shoulder. Other hand underneath and stretching out. Good. So let's try one more either side. Stretching. Lovely diagonals in the body. And relax. And stretch. And relax. Fabulous. Loose fists. Shift weight. Heel, toes straight ahead. This is our lovely bow stance that we'll be practicing later today. And forward, but remember the other hand pulls back. Weight back, pull back, and straight. So Dantian is slightly off center. Put forward, toes straight ahead. Dantian turns until it's facing the front. I can always see my front toe. I'm not overstretching my knees. Back, hands back and change. Place the foot flat and then slowly shifting the weight by bending the front knee and moving back and change heel and toe. If one thing's going forward, something's going back, so the other hand's pulling back. We must always balance the yin and the yang. Or the yin is actually becoming the yang and then the yang becomes the yin. It's a constant dance between both aspects. And what does yin mean and what does the yang mean? It can mean anything that's interdependent and interrelated, like the front hand versus the back hand, up versus down, right versus left. So it's just the two polarities, I guess. Bending our knee, the second one for our knee, and kick or just stretch the foot out, but we keep our weight back. Bend our knee and moving back. This is the second knee exercise. Bend and kick, or just tap on the ground. Bend and come back. This is where we might need a chair or something for our balance. Kicking off the ground or just tapping on the ground, that's fine. And change, stretch, and relax. Last one, either side. Notice when you breathe in, and notice when you breathe out. Last one, stretch, and relax. We might notice we're more steady on one side than the other. Okay, hands are done to end. Working our ankles, keeping the head upright because the head really influences our balance. Touching the heel and the wall of the foot. Flexion, extension of the ankle. Head upright, awareness of the ankle. Good. And changing over. Heel and toe. Heel and toe. Good. Next one is we have 100% of the weight on the leg at the back. We just tap on the little toe on the big toe. There's no weight on the front foot. Some people like to tap on the outside of the heel, inside of the big toe, or outside of the little toe, inside of the big toe. Whatever feels right for your ankles today. Good. And other one. Outside, inside, little toe, big toe, outside, inside. Fabulous, well done. And the last major joint hands extend and relax. Breathing in and out, stretching the fingers out. And relax, stretch, and relax. Let's do some of our hand exercise. So fingertips just touching like this. And then roll the thumbs. Uh, my grandmother used to call this twiddle your thumbs. <laughs> just twiddling your thumbs, rolling them around one direction. And then simply twiddle your thumbs back the other direction. Great, easy. All right, touch the thumbs together, 
twiddle your index fingers. Roll the index fingers around. Keep breathing. Try not to look. Bringing that proprioception back the other way. Index fingers. Great. Touch the index fingers. Now middle fingers. Rolling them around. Rolling along. Keep breathing. Relax the shoulders. Well done. And back the other way. And touch the four fingers. Oh, getting harder. <laughs> this one took me about a year to rewire my brain to be able to move the fingers all independently like this. Takes a little while. And back the other way. And then little fingers rolling one direction. If you put a little bit of pressure on the other fingers, it does make it slightly easier. And back the other way. Fabulous. Hopefully your hands are much warmer. <laughs> okay, so you need three steps to your left. Um, so standing tall and the first thing we'll do is bring the awareness to Dantian. So remember it's about three fingers below your belly button, but it's not on the skin level, it's actually inside a little. Um, in the West we call it the centre of gravity. Keeping our focus there the focus will keep the chi there. So there's one. Keep the chi there. One pin is focus. Good, waving hands in the clouds. Keep the chi at Dantian as I step out to my left. Stepping in, keep the chi. Keeping focus. Change that one. And turn over. Focus at Dantian, back to our center, to breathing. Now harmonizing yin and yang, keep the focus at Dantian, down into the left. Float the hands across to your right. Keep the chi at Dantian up, do back swing to swing around, and weight on that same side. Opening up the front toes, the left toes. Good, come back to our center. And close. So keeping the front of the dantians, the hands float down and then across. And up, front of the shoulders, back swing to go forward. Weight on that right side, opening up those left toes in the block, turning from Dantian. Excellent. Back to our center. Open and close. Now hands back to the right. Close. Coming back to our center. Easing the chi. Dantian as I breathe in and out. 
is where our stall is actually a bit tight. Notice the abdominal breathing. Mm. And then close. Breathing in. Feet. Breathing out. Just focus. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at the um, second one that I wanted us to explore, which is differentiating between empty and full, between yin and yang. So it's quite easy, I think, to really focus on the legs. But as I said, you will have a yin hand and a yang hand. One hand will be up, one will be down. So even in the cloud hands, the yin becomes the yang, the upper hand becomes the lower hand. But let's focus, or focus wherever you like. I'm going to focus on my legs. So differentiating between the full and the empty or the yin and the yang. Don't worry about the dantian anymore. Just drop that. <laughs> focus. Let's begin. So you can feel immediately all of the weights in the right. That's a heavy foot. The left foot's light. And then we shift the weight grain by grain of sand across. We uh, commence. Here we are double weighted and then very subtly we shift weight from side to side. On the outside, no one will be able to see this weight shift, but you might feel it in the body. Very subtle. Good. Differentiating between the full and empty or the yin and the yang, putting all of the weight into one leg, stepping out with your left, that's empty, and then slowly filling it up or emptying the other leg, stepping in, one leg still full. I change my hand, that's not until I shift the weight across that the other leg becomes full. Stepping out change and then filling one leg, emptying another, dipping in, change and fill. I think we've got one more. Let's feel it. Filling one leg and emptying the other, whatever you prefer. Think about the yin becoming the yang. yang. And I can both harmonize the yin and yang. So even here, it's only 60 40 weight shift, but one leg is fuller than the other. And then the other leg becomes a little more full. And then the other leg becomes a little more full. And then one leg becomes completely full because you need the empty foot to open up the toes. And when I come back, I need to rebalance. Other side, one leg is a little more full than the other. And floats across. One leg a little more full. And then the other leg fills up. About 60, 40% of our weight. And shifting weight now, 100% of weight because we need to open up the other toes and you can't open up a foot with any weight in it. Good, now back and checking our weight. Good. And cloud hands back. So one leg filling, filling, filling. The other leg empty, stop. One leg filling. Feeling that dynamic weight shift from leg to leg. Good. That's it. From leg to leg. And we come back. Three breaks in the middle.
all of the weight, one leg is completely full, one bent deep, feet together, and then Great. So in our Tai Chi practice, um, have you ever seen when they do like rock art, um, so people put like a rock and then another rock on top of it and a rock on top of that, and it looks like it's going to fall, but it doesn't actually fall because it's all aligned in that line of force. So in our body, we can imagine we're three balls perfectly balanced on top of each other. There is a point, if you've got three tennis balls and you are very, very careful, there is a point where the three tennis balls would sit perfectly aligned on top of each other. So we imagine from about Dantian down is one big ball, and then from Dantian up to about the neck is another ball, and then from the neck and the head is the third ball. So we need to align these three balls. So, you know, if this ball here is too far forward, it will collapse the structure of the three balls, or if the bottom ball is too far back, um, the, the alignment won't be there. So that's just another way of conceptualising that standing upright. It's very, very subtle, but it's quite a lovely image, I think. Okay, let's go through our Tai Chi for rehab. Um, again, we need three steps to our lift. Sherlock, it's okay. Sorry, my dog's a bit scratching at the door. He wants to come and do some Tai Chi with us today. All right, standing tall. Feel the connection with the earth under the feet. The fingers are along our seams line. That's our gallbladder meridian. The third finger is touching a gallbladder point. And the head is upright but not stiff or rigid. Let's begin separating our left foot out to the side. And the top. Commence them form, palms opposite each other. And fingers face the sky, sinking into the hips. Three breaths in and out. Bring the breath into Dantian and out. Third one. And Close, waving hands to our left, left hand up, stepping left. Dantian drives the movement. Stepping in, stop, walk, and turn. Good. Step, stop, stop. So the top hand's opposite the heart, the bottom hand's opposite Dantian, and turn. Walk and turn. Lovely. Step. Step. Walk and turn. Stepping in. Stop. And back to our centre. One breath in. And out, harmonizing yin and yang, down into the left hip, with the wrists. Dantian brings the hands across. Dantian brings the hands up in front of the left shoulders, swing back to swing around. Fingers pointing left, weight left, opening up those right toes as I block. Good, that looks great. Back to our center. Breathing in. Hands into the right hip. Again, Dantian brings the hands down. Lift the wrist, float across to the left hip. Lift the wrist up, 
front of the right shoulder, swing back to swing forward, around fingers pointing to the right. Weight on the right and opening up. Excellent. Coming back. Center. Breathe in. And out. Cloud hands to the right. So we turn to the left. Then stepping out right. Stepping in. Swap. And simple one, step, step, walk, two, simple two, step, step, and last one. And it's always done to the end. It brings the arms across, it brings the head across, it brings everything across. Fabulous. Three breaths in and out. Just checking into those three balls of the body. How are they perfectly balanced? There's one ball, forward or backwards. Last one, breathe. Lovely, keep the hands opposite. You might feel something in the palms. You might not, doesn't matter. Hands lower. And left foot in. Shaking out. All right, um, let's check the time. Yes, excellent. We've got enough time to have a final run through of our Tai Chi for rehab. So we can internalize the movement. Um, I'm going to try not to talk. That's going to be a real challenge for me, I know. <laughs> but we'll try to do our Tai Chi together in time with each other on Zoom without talking. And we'll see how we go. So it's an opportunity to really drop into the experience of our Tai Chi. So be together. Let's begin.
sounds fantastic. We'll start our cool down. Um, we're, we're in absolute sync, even though we're on Zoom and there's no verbal prompts about uh, which movement to do now. Uh, it was really quite lovely. It felt very quiet, so it makes me realise how much I talk generally. <laughs> Stretching out and relax. Stretching out. Breathing in, stretch the toes, stretch the fingers, and release. Gathering up and sinking down. Gather. Sink down. Last one. And breath out, right, and shaking out. Okay, let's come and grab a seat a bit closer. So it is an opportunity to sit still in that lovely balanced posture. So how do I know I balanced? Um, we actually need to sit on our sit bones, the two uh, bony bits on the bottom. So try not to sit on the um, coccyx, but actually sit on your sit bones. They have even weight on the right and the left side of them. Wherever the hands rest, perhaps they just rest in the lap um, or flat on the thighs, doesn't really matter, but even weight down through the right and the left arm. And you're welcome to close your eyes or if you feel a bit sleepy or a bit distracted, just gaze down at the floor. It gives everyone else on the call some privacy. Um, but if you need to keep your eyes open, that's quite okay as well. So just checking into the body. We've done quite a lot of movement today. Running through the set twice. Doing our warm ups, our cool downs. We really pack a lot into this half an hour. So, how does the body feel after half an hour of our Tai Chi? Just listening to our body, noticing any information that's telling us right here, right? Maybe there's points of ease in the body or points of dis-ease. Again, always good to check into those areas that some people might have a bit of tension, just to notice what's happened there. Let's check into the jaw. Sometimes people hold a bit of tension. What's happening in your jaw right now? The shoulders are another area that some people might hold a bit of tension, taking into one shoulder and then the other. Taking into the pit of the stomach. Again, sometimes in a bit of anxiety or stress, there might be a bit of tension there. Or it might be completely at ease. Or perhaps there's other parts of your body that you know you hold tension. Sometimes it's the forehead. Just checking into the forehead. Or there might be other areas like the neck or buttocks or feet. Just checking into those areas. Let's bring our awareness to the breath. Not controlling the breath, changing it, but just allowing it to be as it is. But what we need to do is simply know when we breathe in and know when we're breathing out. Nothing more, nothing less. Just being with three breaths in and out.
and when you're finished, gently opening the eyes, if they're closed, having a stretch, changing the posture. Congratulations. This is our last session in this series. Uh, if you would like more practice of our Tai Chi for rehab, please revisit the YouTube channel or back on Facebook to keep practicing your Tai Chi for rehab. And if you would like to learn some more Tai Chi together, let council know and we'll see if we can get some more programs. So thank you again for your time and energy. It's been a real joy sharing Tai Chi with you. As we begin, let's end with our Tai Chi salute. Be well. Bye for now.